This video is not sponsored and has no adverts. Hello and thanks for joining me for some more landscape photography. I've got a couple of shoots for you today. We're going to start off just a couple of hundred meters from my front door down at the river. You probably can't see it from there, but there's one single red hawthorn berry left over from autumn hanging over this stream. And I'm only a couple of hundred yards from my front door and I walk around the lake here pretty much every day when it's not tipping down. Had a lot of rain recently, which is why the river is so full at the moment. I spotted that berry on the way home from my walk today and I thought, there's gotta be an image there. It's all by itself and it's right at the end of this gnarled little hawthorn twig hanging over the river. And I thought, oh yeah, well with all the white water running down through, if I drop that out of focus and get my shutter speed just right, that'd make quite a nice backdrop. I've been playing around with the shutter speed and because I've got the background dropped out of focus, uh, I'm shooting at f7.1, but because I'm quite close into the berry um, and luckily I've got absolutely no wind at all so even with a long shutter it's not moving so I can get it nice and sharp but if I used it longer than a second um, what's happening then is the water is just smoothing out into just a big white smudge and I'm losing the nice streaky texture that I'm looking for so I'm using uh, a three-stop uh, ND filter to keep my shutter speed in combination with an aperture of 7.1 shut speed of a second and that's just about perfect. My composition is, I spent quite a bit of time working on it actually and I decided that I wanted the lower half of the image with the streaks leading you up to the berry. The berry's right at the top and the end of the twig just reaches into the top right corner. So a lot of negative space but I just quite like the overall look of it. That's all I'm going to take today, just that one image. Um, it's actually the middle of the afternoon on a working day, so I've got to get back to my desk now. Um, we'll have a look at it on the computer later, see what I can make of it. So what I want to do is just quickly run you through the raw files and demonstrate to you what was going on in my head while I was capturing the pixels, and then you'll see what I did with them. So here's the first image, uh, a five second exposure, um, pretty overexposed, although not at all clipped, as you can see from the histogram. But that gave me an idea of what I was going to be working with. And so we dial down the shutter speed to just two seconds. That's looking a bit better. But when I was down with the camera, I didn't like this area of uh, twigs up in the corner. And this area behind the image here kind of didn't work for me either. So by angling the camera down a little, you can see that I've now created this negative space at the bottom. I've got this nice triangular shape going on here. I need to offset this slightly more but my composition is getting closer to what I was gonna be happy with. Playing around with the shutter speed, we're now down at one second. This is shot at f2.8, and the problem I had with this is that this area here just isn't working for me. Uh, the depth of field is dropping off too quickly, uh, and I really want to have these bits of twig a little bit sharper to give them a bit better separation. So if we narrow down our aperture, F7.1, yep, that works much better as far as I can see. Uh, I'm liking the composition. I've got this slightly offset. I'm shooting at a second. And really, it's just about picking the best exposure for the uh, definition in the water. Another one that I took had a bigger splodge of, of white water going up through the middle. Um, yeah, not too bad, but with just a little bit of cropping, I felt that this one worked the best. I've got two distinct lines of water coming through it, uh, and I decided that this was the raw file I was gonna work with. Now, 
One thing that's really important to me is I always check around the edges of an image to and, and make a note of, of what I'm going to need to do with it. Now, in this case, there are two key things that I needed to deal with. Firstly, this little highlight up here that runs off the edge, it, it's pulling my eye away from the berry, so that's going to need to go. Also, over on this side, you see this little uh, branch way off in the background that's completely out of focus, but it's still a distraction. So we'll get rid of that as well. And then while I was at it, I thought this little stem here where the berry's missing looks a bit lost. So I think we'll probably deal with that as well. And after a, it's a pretty basic bit of processing on this image, this is what we end up with. Um, and I was quite happy with this. I'll let you have a, a longer look at that at the end in the little gallery that I always put up of the images for each video. Now I'm going to take you out to the north side of Anglesey, up near Amloch, a place called Parry's Mountain. It's quite well known, uh, a huge copper mine area with quite an otherworldly landscape. Paris Mountain really is a fascinating landscape and if you ever get the chance to come to Anglesey and you've filled your boots with coastal photography it's well worth a visit. It, it's almost like the surface of Mars, it's how you might envisage it with all the really fantastic colours, dark reds, bright golds and oranges uh, in a landscape that is really struggling to come back from the impact we've had on it which is why, of course, uh, it's one of the uh, targets for my project. I've picked this afternoon as exactly the sort of conditions that shows this place off to its best. My tip to you if you come to visit is forget it unless the sun is shining brightly. And ideally, not in midsummer, you want to be at this time of year somewhere between November and February because you'll get hours of really nice side light, not too intense but enough as you can see from the backdrop behind me to really pop the colours because without any sunlight it just looks drab and uninteresting. It's next to impossible to get a decent picture out of it. What I've been doing is trying to get some close-ups of the uh, out-of-season heather with the gouge in the landscape as its backdrop. I'm not sure that that's been particularly successful but we'll have a chat about those images when we get back. What I'm working on here is shooting right across the, uh, the pit to some buildings over on the far side. Now if I walked around there and got any nearer to them and filled my frame with them, they lose context. What I wanted to do today was to use the fact that the sun is in just the right angle to illuminate the ground in front of them. There's a spoil heap that's bright red in colour and the rain has washed these uh, ridges in it and each ridge is catching the light so it's almost like a almost like a you know when you bake a flan and you tip it out and you've got that rippy edge you, you know what I mean you'll see it in the pictures anyway my challenge is using the long lens at around about 100 120 millimeters in a really stiff breeze as we've got today uh, has been uh, getting my shots really sharp so uh, I've taken a bit of a gamble with the ISO I've cranked it up as far as a thousand uh, and I'm shooting f3.5 I've done some test shots, gone in really close, and at f2.8, which is as wide as this lens will go, the building, because it's so far away from me, is just ever so slightly softer than I'd like it. So just by closing down my aperture a touch to 3.5, getting it quite nice and sharp, but that's allowing me to get my shutter speed up to uh, 1 over 640. It's really, nature is really struggling to come back and that's because the ground is, is open rock, there's no soil formed at all uh, and it's really toxic, unbelievably toxic and that makes it very, very difficult even for pioneer species to, to get any sort of a hold. But because of that, it still makes for interesting photography because there is quite a lot of heather I'm going to head up and have a go at shooting the tower in a minute with this nice side light on it and that'll be it for today.
I'm in danger of looking like a wildlife photographer tucked in down here at this low angle. Um, but to be honest with you, I'm on a pile of rocks and if I knelt down, it would crush my knees terribly. So my ass is slightly more padded than my knees. Anyway, um, what I've done is I found this absolutely fantastic wind-blown stunted hawthorn bush that's clinging on here and it, it's about the only little bit of vegetation any higher than the heather for miles around. Now I'd thought that my image from this angle of the pumping tower would be across this bed of heather where I've got the light catching the layers in it leading you up to the tower and I mucked about with that for a while and when I spotted this bush it was a no-brainer uh, this this was going to be far better I've been so fortunate with the light today it's absolutely fabulous this beautiful soft golden side light for the last couple of hours and it's still going on right now I'm not going to bother shooting sunset from up here I think this is probably going to be the last one for this particular session but uh, it's a time of year when the this got loads of berries on it and most of the bushes around where I live um, as you may have seen from the shot that I showed you earlier um, they've got hardly any berries left so I'm amazed they haven't all been blown off uh, but what it does is it gives me that fantastic juxtaposition of the derelict old tower with the vegetation making an effort to reinstate itself I'm not actually going to talk much about the uh, settings on this one because I've taken a whole range of them and we'll settle on uh, what the final image is going to be when we get back with it. So you'll be able to have a look at what I settled on there. I've tried higher compositions. The problem with that was that the bush was kind of being lost by the background a little bit. Uh, so I felt this was better perfect light for polarizing of course I'm angled on to the sun and it's really punching that saturation quite nicely for me even though of course it's likely that I'll dial it down a bit in post but it just really makes those colors nice and rich and vibrant the difficulty as has been all afternoon is a really sharp breeze uh, the tree is blowing around and I want those berries pin sharp I've got some lovely uh, lit up bits of grass in the mid-ground. I don't mind them blowing around a little bit. A bit of movement in the mid-ground and I've kind of got a slab of not much going on over to the right hand side so they'll put something in that part of the image but um, I, I've got essentially I've got the bush on the third and the bottom left and the tower on the third of the top right it's a bit formulaic but nevertheless um, I, I've spent quite a bit of time uh, trying different positions out and, and that really was the only one that that really seemed to work well now I've got three images that I decided to work with when I'd been through my raw files and what I'm going to do is just show you the steps of interest uh, in my sequence going from the raw file through to the finished item um, and we're going to start with an image that I didn't really talk you through when we were out and about. Now this was the first image I took and it's always been a tough composition for me trying to get across in a single shot how epic the landscape is looking across that chasm. Now, having decided which raw files I'm going to work with, one of the first things that I do is I look at them really carefully and I consider every aspect of them and sometimes I'll even write notes as to what I'm going to want to do with them. Uh, so why don't we start at the top of this image, work our way down and I'll tell you what my thought processes were as I started to tackle it. Starting up here in the sky, as you can see, it, it's completely overexposed. There's no detail in it at all. It's not clipped. There's plenty to work with there, uh, but that's going to need quite a bit of attention. Uh, coming further down, you see these wind turbines. Now, I don't have a problem with wind turbines in the landscape, but in this context, uh, they are distracting and I want to get rid of those. So they'll need to go. Now, coming over here, you see there's a a little snake of ramblers, they're going to have to go. Coming down, uh, this pond is too bright, going to need to tone that down a bit, as with this one further down here as well. Uh, and then the path that runs round here in this lovely sweeping curve, that's going to need to be uh, brightened up a bit to give it a bit more punch in this mid-ground. Um, the composition overall uh, is straight out of camera. I haven't cropped it at all. 
Um, what I liked about the way I got this set up was the way this path rolls around and then nestles in this sort of V-shaped framing at the bottom. So I was really happy with how that worked out. Going to need to tone down these highlights over here and especially on this rock. This whole side of the image there is, is way too bright. In the foreground, I really like the detail and I'm going to want to retain that, but that will need to be darkened down because what I'm going to be looking to do is to kind of create a 3D effect with dodging and burning to run you through the image out to the building in the far side there. So having worked out what I want to do with the image, in this particular case, it is very much um, a, a complex series of dodging and burning, some color control because the whole image is, I think, uh, a little bit uh, washed out. It looks a bit muddy. Uh, and then, of course, there's the cloning to be done. So fast forward uh, about an hour or so. And this is the sort of thing we end up with actually as a, a representation of what an amazing landscape there is at Paris Mountain. Pretty happy with this one. So this is the raw file of the first image that I was talking to you about while we were out and about. And the only thing I've done with it pretty much is a square crop. Again, as with the previous image, the first thing then I need to look at is, well, what needs to be done on it? Straight away, you can see this central area here is too bright. It's distracting from this. There really isn't anything contrasting in between them. I have dropped the background off so that it's slightly soft, so that's okay. Uh, and I'm going to use dodging and burning to create that 3D effect that I'm always looking for in my images so it doesn't look so flat and washed out. So I'm going to want to kind of create, kind of pull the background and the foreground apart. But let's just start at the bottom of these layers and head on up through them. So the first layer is just a really simple bit of cloning just to get rid of some of these little bright to highlight boulders around the edges. That's those dealt with. And the next layer up is a topaz denoise layer. Uh, and as you can see from the mask, I've only applied this to the very top of the image. So I'm just denoising the sky uh, and these misty areas in the background. And the next layer up is where I'm doing my sharpening. And again, this has been masked and I'm using Topaz Sharpen on this one. This is the mask that I've applied. This white area is the building. Uh, this is the entire foreground. And then these two blobs here, are these two little areas of rocks here. So I've just sharpened those slightly, but I didn't want to apply any sharpening to uh, all of this heather and these grasses here in the midground, because I'm going to want to kind of distract you from those in the final image. You'll see what I mean later on. The next layer up is a Color Effects Pro layer. And all I've done with this is applied some Pro Contrast. It's masked so that it's literally just this area of the building itself, just to pop these boulders here along these edges uh, and make it stand out. Uh, now, the next layer up is where most of the magic is done. This is the camera raw filter, and this is a huge amount of dodging and burning and global color control. So with all of that dodging and burning applied, we're now getting towards that 3D look that I was after at the outset. And so that's the finished image on this one. So the final image is the Hawthorne berries. And all I've done with this uh, so far is just cropped it top and bottom. Uh, I haven't cropped it from either side at all. I don't do really detailed color or contrast work in camera raw. I'll use Nick Viveza for that. Let me show you why. Here's the image opened in Viveza. As you can see, I've added a single control point here and targeted one of these red berries. And what that allows me to do is if I show you the mask that Viveza has created, you can see how accurately it's just picked out the berries. And what that's allowed me to do then is because I've desaturated most of the image uh, across the board using Camera Raw, with this I've just added back in a little bit of brightness, a hint of saturation, and an extra bit of red channel enhancement to pop those berries in the uh, final mix. Uh, the rest of the processing of this image is very much along the lines of the other images, uh, and the final result looks like that. 
I'm reasonably happy with those three Paris mountain images. I really enjoyed capturing them and I really enjoyed processing them. Well, I'm going to leave it there for this one. Thank you ever so much for joining me. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, why not subscribe now and join me next time? Cheers.